I've recorded every single Mythic Plus key that I've attempted in Season 1 of The War Within, and in this series I'm going to cover the highs and lows of each dungeon on my way to pushing to the 0.1% title. So, in today's video we're going to start with a plus 11 Dawnbreaker that I did not expect to get any score from because we have already timed one of these, but we managed to get one score out of this at the end. I may or may not have been reading chat on the third mini boss just as it was about to die and I did end up standing in the dark orb but we used some defensives and more importantly Arty healed through it like a giga chad. He can do it all chat, he can DPS, he can out DPS me in every single bloody key and he can also heal me when I'm stood in the dark orbs. Then on to the second boss, I blasted this boss into oblivion. This boss got absolutely deleted off the face of the planet. We end those fights, granted a little bit of AoE of course when the ads do come in, but we end this fight on 1.9 million DPS. Holy, who is this mage bro? Well that's pretty much it for this key, I mean like I said I didn't really expect to be having to report on this, I thought it was just going to be a homework key, but we did get one score out of it so I do have to report. And that takes us up to a nice clean 2,690 Mythic Plus score. And now we move back onto a Necrotic Wake plus 11. Any guesses as to how this is going to go? So I was actually hung over from uh, going out the night before this key, so I definitely was not feeling locked in. And we get three throw fleshes in a row. Not ideal. I still have my Blast Wave up, so if I was looking, I could have definitely stopped that. I had just used my Dragon's Breath, so I thought I was safe, but apparently not, so we do end up dying. But in this key, what you'll realize is we've actually got a Spy Master's Web finally. I mean, I did have it in the Arcane key as well, I just forgot that I had it, and that's probably why I did so much DPS to that second boss. So I've definitely been trying to get used to this trinket, let's say, and I still am to this day. I need some, I need like a glow on my weak aura that tracks the stacks on it, because I just don't press it sometimes and I miss out on the use of it, and then I'm missing out on stacking it back up. So I'm actually losing a lot of damage because of that. Oh my god, I've been sat on 40 stacks of Spy Master's Web for two different icy veins. <laughs> but when we do end up using it, we use it on this Necromancer pack right here. And holy moly, this trinket is insane. <laughs> Doing 7 mil DPS on the Necromancer pack here. My god, imagine if that was actually on like a mass AoE pack where I am taking full advantage of the AoE. That would be disgusting. Tell you what though, this Death Knight was probably the first like pumper Frost Death Knight that we played with. I mean, all Frost DKs pump just by default anyway, but this one was particularly pumping on the damage meters. As you can see, he's doing 2.5 mil overall right now. Skipping over to the upstairs, then we pull this pack in the back left. And I saw this throw cleaver go on me, so I kind of shimmied left, shimmy forward, shimmy left, so I shimmied left, and I thought that, basically, I thought that that collector was in the way of it, but it turns out it wasn't. I don't know if the um, demon hunter actually moved the pack even further to the left, and then the cleaver missed the mob and killed me, but yeah, we do get taken out by the cleaver. Like I said, guys, I was hungover, okay? And I thought we were actually going to time this one. We, ha we go into the last boss with five and a half minutes left, and the tank says, okay, Lego, focus. And I needed this. I needed some words of encouragement because I wasn't feeling my best self. So yeah, it was it was all going well until it wasn't. And then the tank just fell over. Um, so maybe he was trying to tell himself to focus. Yeah, not too sure what happened there. I mean, I know the boss does pump the tank, but you can't be the one to tell the group to focus and then fall over, surely. It's like, surely that can't happen, right? <laughs> So yeah, that is the key. GG. Over. But we start with this 12 plus mists now. I mean, yeah, it's mists, so it's an easier 12. But to finally start getting some 12s on the board feels real good. What doesn't feel great though is uh, for whatever reason, Arty had accidentally copied Seb's name into his PI macro. So for the first half of this dungeon, Arty was PIing the augmentation evoker in our first plus 12 of the season. Anyway, we get to the first boss, no problems. Artie, I think, just kind of caught himself in amongst the puddles and just like panicked and ran into the puddles. So he actually ends up dying and then does also lose his 40 stacks of Spy Master's Web. So the boss does take a lot longer because of that. And then it doesn't help either when we get to the phase and I forget to press my Spy Master's Web for the first few seconds of the damage window. So yeah, it's just something like I just need to play with this trinket for a bit and I'll get used to it and then we'll start slamming. Also, what I've noticed is in higher keys, they seem to be starting off this boss by fighting or damaging Ingram Alloc first. 
because at the start of the fight he doesn't actually have the damage reduction debuff on him so you can get some free damage on him there and then you take down Droman and then you get the increased damage on Ingram Alloc in the phase and I think that is just going to make higher keys a lot easier if you do do it that way and I do just generally think as well that Arcane is just better for this dungeon I'm kind of committing to the Frost Dream right now and I'm just going to play Frost regardless because if I swap back and forth between Arcane and Frost, I'm going to like start playing Arcane and I'm just going to be focusing on damage and you can't do that in these higher keys because I need to be pressing my defensives, I need to be pressing my utility to stop mobs actually casting, so yeah. Maybe I could get away with it in Mist because it's a dungeon that I kind of know like the back of my hand and Arcane is insane in this dungeon. Like this first boss would have been so much quicker. But yeah, because I'm new to Mage, I do just want to like focus on one for now. Arcane is also a lot nicer for the maze as well because of I can just delete the defenders. Is that what they're called? Or whichever the priority mobs are in the maze. I can't remember if they're defenders or the guardians. But I mean, regardless, I can delete them both, right, as Arcane. I don't have that kind of prior damage uh, when I'm playing Frost. Then after Mistcaller, we did a weird pull. In these higher keys, you don't normally play this three packs. It's just not an efficient use of time. Like we're both sat on cooldowns for this. And I do have to just end up sending my cooldowns. I don't put my Spy Master's Web on purpose this time, okay? I left that for the next pack. But yeah, it's just an awkward pack. Like we want to be skipping this. I don't know if the... DK just didn't know that we can skip it, like we can do a slow fall skip, or we can even sleepwalk if Seb's talented into sleepwalk. So maybe that's just something that we needed to clear up with on by just communicating with each other. But then we also went down to the right and played the four pack just by themselves, which I don't know if this was to buy back time for our cooldowns, maybe. I mean, I'd understand that then, but wait, actually no, because Artie had to pop his cooldowns here. As you can see, he's doing 5 million DPS on a four pack. So yeah, we just played this area really inefficiently with our cooldowns but not the end of the world we move on to the last boss and we actually delay our cooldowns off the rip just to line it up with lust here and we've got 40 stacks with spy masters too so we do build ourselves all the way up to around 1.8 million dps here obviously there are some ads in this fight but the majority of my damage is just being funneled straight into tradova to get it down and we time it with around a minute left. So still a little bit of time in the bank. We get 23 score out of this, taking us up to 2,713. 300 points away from 3k. I kind of like that 3k is like a, a goal to aspire to. Not that it wasn't before. I don't want to sound like an elitist, but 3k became a lot easier as we progress through Dragonfly. And now it feels like a challenge to get to 3k again. We're running up a 12 Dawnbreaker here. So we pop all of our big cooldowns on the first pool, get that down. And then what we've been doing is lusting the second pool. And we've been having some problems with this pool. We keep ninja pulling the dark mages or the shadow mages on the side. So they are just sat there free casting. We can't have them in this pack, basically. We cannot ninja pull them because it will be a wipe. They just sit there spam casting. Obviously, we can kick them in. But I can't damage them because my splitting ice will hit the mobs that they're RPing in combat with. And there's enough outgoing damage in this pack as it is. We still haven't quite figured out what's been ninja pulling it. We now know that Rally has been ninja pulling it in some keys because of his thunderclap. He just didn't realize how big it was. But I am also quite convinced that my splinter storms or my splinters from my spell slinger are ninja pulling them as well because they do that in Siege of Boralus. I think there's another dungeon that they also do that in as well. And then I really wouldn't surprise me if they did it here as well. So what I want our group to do now is pull the mobs on the side into the middle so that we can play them in the middle. I don't know why we've never done that because there's no casters to kick over. The Architect, or no, sorry, the Ritualist does cast a Tormenting Ray into a Stygian Seed. So he takes a while to get over, but he does eventually come and then we're not near any mobs to be ninja pulling them. So me and the Shammy do actually end up dying on this pool. I mean, once the Shammy's down, it's kind of hard to stay alive, right? But we crack on anyway. It's only two deaths, not the end of the world. Then we sort of cooked up a new route here where we go through the back of the church and do a big pool. I have all my cooldowns here and 40 stacks of Spy Master's Web. So we're going to be doing some big, big damage. As you can see here, sustaining 5 million DPS here for a good minute. And then Artie gets a little bit keen and uh, he just turns around and runs straight into the first mini boss and gets walloped. <laughs> I guess he just thought Relentless was going to be quicker to get over to it, but I, mean, I feel like he didn't really give him a chance. <laughs> I don't know if people are doing it this in high keys. I mean, they must be, right? But like pulling this mini, this first mini boss in with this pack as well. Oh my God, it's terrifying. I feel like every Abyssal Blast went on me. So 
if I get an Abyssal Blast, you've got to use a big cooldown. That dot hurts a lot, especially if you also get an Abyssal Rot from the like Void Walker looking dudes. Let me move on to the second mini boss. Relly did some interesting tanking here. I mean, like I don't really have an issue with it at all, but he tanked the mini boss on the other side to what we normally tank them on. I think this was so that he could actually pull the two Shadow Walkers in. But being over this side does mean that you can pull the congealed darknesses. But to be honest, I mean, if I was playing Arcane, I would like to tank on this side so that my Arcane Orbs can't fall off the back and pull the Sereki Militant, because that is a guaranteed wipe. Moving on to the third mini boss then, Abyssal Blast goes on Arty just after the Dark Orb gets sent out. And he actually called in comms here that he was going to die. I was watching his health bar and he looked pretty healthy. So I was like, no, you're not going to die. You're fine. And I did have my finger on the trigger for my mass barrier. And it kind of seems like he takes like a double tick just before the Dark Orb explodes. I mean, he probably would have died anyway and I should have pressed my mass barrier here. But his health like chunks down twice just before the Dark Orb hits and then he does end up dying. So I should have just listened to him. I should have trusted him. And like, I, I mean, I don't really know what I'm saving my mass barrier for anyway. It might not have even saved him to be fair because he, yeah, it probably wouldn't have saved him. But like, at least I would have tried, right? That's something for me to learn. Then we pump down Anubikaj, the second boss. But towards the end, we do, I think all of the DPS end up ticking out to the shadowy decay i think we thought that we were just going to kill it in time but apparently not i should have used my invis here i would have lived and we wouldn't have taken off um 45 seconds off the timer at the end of this boss when it's pretty much dead but although the last boss does take a bloody age to kill <laughs> i guess a five minute fight we do send it home with around 40 seconds left. So even though it's quite a scuffed key, we do actually manage to still time it. And we get 22 score out of that, taking us up to 2,735. I think if you time all 12s, you're like well on your way to 3K. Like you're definitely above 2.9 at that point. So that is definitely the mission because 12s like, yeah, they are more difficult, but they're not impossible. Like if you play a clean key, you're going to time them. Then we jump on stream the next day. We're going to start up with a plus 11 Grimbatol here. And with this dungeon, it's a very, very forgiving timer. If you guys have seen the previous episodes, we definitely know that by now. So if you just play this dungeon slow and steady at these key levels, you're going to time it. Now, this was the first key of the day, so I needed a bit of warming up here. I don't know how I did not see this Shadow Flame Slash. I guess, I think it's Shifting Power. I die a lot when I'm casting Shifting Power because it's just such a big animation that I don't see it. As you can see by my face, I was so confused what I stood in here, but it was a Shadow Flame Slash. And we blame not wearing the glasses on this one, okay? <laughs> so we whacked those on straight after. And from the few deaths that we did have in this key, my personal deaths, I am just losing so much damage from my Spy Master's web being reset. This might actually make me play less greedy and more for like utility and defensive usage because of the in turn i'm gonna get damage from that normally i just only care about my damage to an extent of course but yeah when i'm dying i am losing so much damage on the overall here then in the third area something that i could definitely learn from here we played this beguiler and warlock pack and my priority in this area is to be dispelling the enveloping shadow flames I think I'm the only one that can do it. Obviously, Seb's got Quarterizing Flame, but that's a minute cooldown. I don't think Holy Paladins can decurse, so I have to have my finger on the trigger with the Dispels. I'm going to take full responsibility here, but if somebody did kick this Shadow Flame Bolt that was going on me, it actually says it's going on Relentless in the end, but it does go on me. At the same time as the enveloping Shadow Flame goes off, then I would have survived. But what I could have done to live here is instead of panicking and thinking, oh man, I need to dispel real quick, I should have stopped this cast with a Dragon's Breath or a Blast Wave. My interrupt was actually on cooldown, but there's another Shadow Flame Bolt going on me here. I prior this global on a D-Curse, but if I'd stopped that, or if Relentless or Seb had kicked, then I wouldn't have died here. Jumping over to the third boss then here, we had Relentless. He figured out the tanking spot, so he's in the little corner here where the adds spawn basically on top of each other and all the tornadoes. And this is really nice for me if I can execute it well. So... <laughs> I did execute it well, but I did get hit by a tornado at the same time because there's three mobs stacked at the same place. I can use my Cone of Cold to reset my Comet Storm and Frozen Orb and get some big damage out of that. I almost died for it, but I just know to be a bit more careful on it next time. If you're going to try this for yourself, though, make sure that you wait for the fix dates to go out first because you definitely don't want to be blinking in there to reset and then you just blow up your whole party because <laughs> you get hit by your fixated act. 
Then moving over to the last boss, we've got these Corruptor ads. We actually played two Corruptors, which like I've been saying in the previous episode, I think is the play. As long as you don't kill all of the hatchlings and get a massive shadow debuff for the corrupt i mean and even then just press a def press big defensive cor for corrupt and you should be fine like i literally in this dungeon got four corrupts on me in a row and i still managed to survive with this double pull so that should be a standard pull for us from now on i'm sure and we just missed the two chest timer and we get five score out of this taking us up to 2740 same stream we jump ourselves into another plus 12 we've got an arakara this time so it should be a free dungeon definitely definitely one of the easier 12s to time we do a massive pull at the start and we kind of delay pulling the second attendant in i think we should just grab it straight from the off like we always kind of try and delay pulling this in but i think if you just grab it and then you just interrupt the resonant barrage like you should be fine me and Artie both slamming damage here, well over 5 million damage. To be fair, with the amount of mobs in this pool, I kind of expected that we would be doing more, but apparently not. Then we move on to the first boss. Holy moly, Frost Mage is so insanely OP for this fight. Like, every time ads come out, what I'm going to do is place a blizzard on all of the ads so that they're, like, insanely slow. And then I'm also going to maybe spam a frozen orb over there and also dump some ice lances if needed. But with the amount of kiting potential we have because we've got a Frost Mage, Arty can just funnel all of his damage off of these crawlers into the main boss and just destroy the main boss. Another shifting power death for me though. It's just the animation, man. Like it gets in the way. I should have known that there was going to be another Swirly under me, but it was literally the last tick of the Gossamer Onslaught. So I just didn't see it under me because I've got this massive like arcane pulse coming out of me. So I was a little bit confused how I died there, but quickly realized that's what it was. And then again, just with the Blizzard and Frozen Orb into the ads, passively cleave them down. So I think we finally figured out this boss once and for all. We were definitely struggling with this boss before. And then I did have my cooldowns come up, like, I mean, semi halfway through this Blood Guard pool just after the first boss. I wanted to save because I thought we were going to do a big pool going right. But this is the first time that we actually end up going left. So I basically saved my cooldowns for nothing here, and I definitely should have just sent them. I mean, I should have sent them anyway because the Blood Guard was dying very quickly, but the assistants actually stayed up for a long time and I would have got full value out of my cooldown, so why not send them? But that's just me learning the timings with like these higher keys, so yeah. The rest of the dungeon, though, was a very, very clean run. We get to this last area with the Overseer and all of the winged carriers. From now on, I'm going to be popping a Mirror Images going straight into this pack. To be honest, it was only after this key that I realized that Mirror Images actually last for 40 seconds, which is a long time to have a defensive up. So I need to just get more liberal with using my Mirror Images and just sending them because that would have saved me here. I think like three or four winged carriers just dashed to me and instantly one shot me. So... Then we move on to the last boss. This is a pretty long fight, to be honest. I mean, over three minutes here, and we're both slamming DPS. But we do time the key with just under six minutes left. Like, Arakara is a really forgiving timer. So if you have a clean key and you're doing a lot of damage, you're going to time it with a lot of time left. So we get 30 score out of this, taking us up to 2,770. We're getting some big IO gains in this episode, aren't we? We move on to a 12 City of Threads now. This first pool is actually kind of scary. Like, we are doing super well with our stops and kicks here. But these silk binders, they just don't stop. They just keep on, keep on casting. And that, coupled with the Swarm Guard's Ravenous Swarm, took the healer down to 50%. And then the silk binder just finished him off with a web bolt. So, unlucky there. I had nothing that I could have done about that. And to be fair, the healer's kick did just come off of cooldown, ready to kick that bolt that killed him. Seb's uh, kick was off cooldown as well. But I think they had just come back. So, like, you're not you're not permanently staring at your interrupt, are you, to see when it's exactly coming back so you can kick off the rip again. Like, you've got so much other stuff going on. Finally, learning on the first boss as well. I, what I've done is basically I'm just positioning myself better for the Shadows of Doubt that come out so that we're kind of all spread around the boss and you can see where the orbs are going to be and where they're going to travel to. So I shouldn't have any more problems with this boss. Being this much more prepared just made it so much easier to deal with this mechanic. Then we move on to the final Eye of the Queen pack. We've got the Webmancer in here as well. I've got my cooldowns coming up and I've got 40 stacks of Spy Master's Web. So I was literally just thinking about my damage right now. I was like, right, am I going to send here or am I going to send on the boss with Lust? Because this is like a long pack like it's going to take a long time to kill if i don't send here but then i do want to turbo delete the second boss with my two target cleave lust cooldowns and also my spy master's web 
So this is the conversation that was exactly going on in my brain. I forgot about the Void Rush that was about to go out. I do end up kicking the Grim Weave Blast, otherwise I definitely would have died even earlier here. And then a knife throw goes out on me and I do die. I should have just ice blocked here. I don't know. Like, yeah, I mean, I was just thinking about damage. I'll be honest. Like, even when I was ticking down that low, I was probably thinking, oh, my Spy Masters, bro. And guess what? I bloody lost all my stacks anyway. So GG. Ah, I have also just noticed that the healer was obviously drinking from the previous pack or something like that. So we actually pulled this pack without the healer being here. So he was kind of playing from behind the whole time anyway. I mean, again, I should have been more aware of that. And I definitely should have popped a defensive at that point. But also, if we just waited a few seconds for the healer to get over and then pulled, we might not have died. Then we did the standard humongous conscript pull after the second boss. But here I've got 40 stacks. I've got my cooldowns as well. So we do end up sustaining around five to six million damage here. I just feel like Frost never really goes above that kind of damage though. Like, I don't know if I'm just playing wrong, but now that I know that I shouldn't be spamming Glacial Spike in AoE and I should just be Ice Lancing if I've got more than three targets, I feel like I can't be doing that much wrong. I mean, I'm not complaining about doing five mil DPS, but with that amount of mobs, my cooldowns and 40 stacks of Spy Masters, I just felt like I should be doing more, you know? Then we move on to the coagulation. I think the key was probably depleted at this point anyway. Like we start the boss with around nine minutes left and we've still got this boss to kill, the last boss to kill and two mini bosses to kill. So yeah, it's probably GG anyway. Seb actually ends up dying here. He just takes out to the Dark Pulse. I think he learned from this fight right now because he's been popping his defenses for the Vicious Darkness, which I think at this key level, you just live natty. Like, yeah, it might be scary, but there's no other damage going out anyway. Like, I just have my barrier up for it. Sometimes I'll alter time to get back to position so I can start casting again quicker. But I've realized also I should save my alter time for the Dark Pulse. So yeah, from now on, I guess Seb is just not going to press his hardened scales or obsidian scales, whatever they're called, on the Vicious Darkness. And he'll save one at least for the Dark Pulse. But yeah, that's the key done. Like, it, it's over at this point. Then I guess this is one of our keys because we just ran it straight back on a plus 11. And because we've just done like a whole city of threads, I'm not going to go super in-depth into this key. At the start, I was really happy with how aware I was of like kicks going off and like me stopping stuff, using defensives if casts were on me, even just from random mobs. Holy moly, though, did we slam the first boss's head in. <laughs> I ended this single target fight at 1.7 mil DPS. Like that is nuts. Frost is actually super good on um, single target. Then back to the same sticking point as last key where it all went wrong. I was debating sending cooldowns again on this last Eye of the Queen pack. I actually did end up sending them, but I held my Spy Masters. I mean, I didn't have max stacks anyway. And then by the time we got up to NX and VX, everything was back. It was perfectly timed. But yeah, 40 stacks here with all cooldowns up and lust. Two target cleave. Starting the fight at three and a half, four mil DPS. <laughs> oh, that feels good. Then we have our Spy Master's web and cooldowns again for this pack just before the coagulation. I deleted this pack of the face of the earth. So Relly actually did some really nice improvisation here and just went and pulled the other test subject because I was still in my cooldowns here, still pumping DPS and Artie was ramping. So some nice decision making there from him. Seb finally lived the coagulation, so we won't go over that. We'll skip straight over to the mini boss at the end. And I do actually end up just ticking out to the Ravenous Swarm. Very unfortunate. I just kind of felt like I didn't get that many heals. I like I I can take the blame for this because like, look, my defensives are off cooldown. But as you can see, I just kind of ticked down over like five or six seconds. Like I thought I was safe and got, yeah, greedy by prioritizing damage. But like, I just kind of expected a heal, you know? No blame to the healer though. They played really well for the rest of the key. And then we do actually end up two chesting this bad boy. And most importantly, look at that overall. We finally won our first overall against RT of season one. <laughs> and we get 19 score out of this, taking us up to 2,789. On to the end of this stream, we tried a 13 Dawnbreaker. Now this key should actually, like this is a very timeable key. This, we're not out of our depth here, but we do end up depleting this one. Second pack did last forever. We've got no cooldowns. We do send lust on the second pack as per normal, but we also still were in this mindset of bringing the commander pack over to the ritualist pack. So we end up pulling ninja, pulling the shadow mage again. That just chain casts. And then like, again, it's just a complete panic show where like I swap to the shadow mage to try and kill it quickly. But then my splitting ice hits the shadow mage next to it and that pulls it. So now we've got like three shadow mages just spam casting on everyone. They're not even coming in. 
Schmid actually really like clutched here though. Like he did some big pumping on the heels. And we didn't even have a death, which is insane. So hats off to Schmid there. I guess maybe the rest of the group played well as well. But yeah, my god. Moving on to the first boss then. My cooldowns come up with a 40 stacker of the Spy Master's web. But the boss was already 80% here. In hindsight, I definitely should have sent here. But I was like umming and ahhing. And then the boss by that time was like 75%. It phases at 50%, so I was like, I'm just going to literally delete this boss, and then we're going to have to go and fly, and I'm still going to be in my icy veins. So I kind of wanted to save for after. Looking back on it, though, I definitely should have sent before, now, and then also after, because I probably would have got max value out of it anyway. Towards the end of the fight, we had some horrible positioning. I mean, I'm not blaming Relentless here. Maybe we could have positioned it better, but this boss is an absolute mission to move. So we do get a horrible beam rotation, which takes us all into the um, like collapsing night puddles here. So I just pop a defensive and run through it. Seb ends up dying to it, though. So maybe we could work on our positioning there, or maybe we just did get turbo unlucky. Then after the first boss, we run in the back through the church again. This has happened a few times now where Schmied or like a resto chamois will get aggro off of the rip because i think relentless will go through pick up the pack heal thunderclap to get aggro and then maybe his the resto chamois earth shield will proc heal him and then the healer will get aggro and die so shmeed dies off the rip here we're kind of playing from behind at this point anyway he does ank so he gets straight back up pretty much but then instantly dies so we're having to fight for our lives here with all of our defensives and we do some nice stops as well. We do manage to sort of save the pool a little bit because of RT's uh, vampiric eruption. No, vampiric embrace. There we go. We got there in the end. <laughs> the off healing that that spec does in its cooldowns with vampiric embrace is a joke. So Shmeed does get back to us. But I think just because the pool was so scuffed and it took so long to die with this amount of mobs, it does get overwhelming and then Relentless does just tick out. And then obviously the rest of us follow with him. So that was unfortunate. 13 Dawnbreak is definitely a timeable key. I think we just need some practice in these higher keys. Like we've only timed, we've only done four plus 12s at this point and we've only timed three of them. So we're still getting to grips with like this extra damage and health that we get from the Xanataf Skyle. But that is where we're going to leave it for this episode. We managed to get ourselves up to 2,789. And I'll just quickly touch on, this is what the dungeon breakdowns are looking like. So we've got Arakara, Dawn and Mist timed on 12s. We've got a two-chested City of Threads. We've got three 11s timed in Grimbatol, Siege, and Stone Vault. And then I'm still stuck on a Necrotic Wake plus 10, which I think I might be stuck on for the rest of this season. If you guys are enjoying this series, then please feel free to drop a like down below. Subscribe to your boy if you're new. And until next time, I'll catch you guys later.